Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and we're gonna be covering the Bryson DeChambeau nine hole cup. This is gonna be the rookie division qualifying round. So as you can see here, we're seeing it at a minus 16. Very nice score. We're absolutely gonna take it. We're gonna notice here that, especially in tier three rookie, that the scores for qualifying are gonna be really high. We've got one, two, three people sitting there at a minus 15. One out of minus 14, and looks like some of these folks haven't started, and some are just kind of uh, testing some shots out. But, you know, regardless, you know, I definitely expect the scores to be very, very high today and, you know, through this tournament. So we need to do our best to hit perfect shots and to get dialed in. But let's go ahead, and we're going to go right into the replays. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. You know, it would be awesome. Help share my uh, videos to your clan. You know, I don't think many people do the nine hole cup on rookie or pro division walkthrough. I'm going to have both of them for you. Now, pro is going to be a little bit later, um, even maybe possibly tomorrow morning. I'll get up very early and do it as I have a very, very long work day today. But regardless, let's go ahead and get this party started. Please take a moment to hit the thumbs up as well. Let's go. Hole number one. I'm going to actually give you two looks at hole number one. Because depending on if you hit a perfect or a great ball, uh, you might end up in a couple different spots on the fairway. But you're going to see here, you know, um, we're going to go a full top, full left. We are going with a kingmaker just because of the headwind. Now, I think if you have powerful drivers like I do, you could probably make this with a katana, um, you know, with some more overpower. Because you're going to see here that we kick this fairway and we roll... We roll and, you know, ultimately we're really good. Now there's going to be another part of this fairway that you might catch, which actually makes you go a lot further on the drive. But you'll see here, this is just a normal chip in. It is a little bit weird though, because of the way the funnel is on the green. So, you know, we kind of um, adjust our top spin here, full top, use the fringe to land on. And then you'll see here, we hit a perfect ball. And we get ourselves nicely into the hole for an eagle. Now, here is another look. So here's another look. Again, full top, full left. Same setup. You know, I'm just moving my target back a little bit so that I can adjust my rings properly. And then when I adjust my rings, you know, I do go into OP. But here, again, with the overpower and a ton of curl to the left. We hit a perfect ball this time. And then because we hit a perfect ball, we're going to get more yards. But we also get a huge kick right here um, by hitting the green. So when we hit the green, of course, we're going to roll really fast. So we have to be a little bit careful of that because you see I come really close to getting that ball into the rough. You know, but it doesn't go into the rough. So, you know, it's a good shot all in all. You know, but just be wary of that, that, you know. That depending on how much overpower you use and a perfect shot, you could really catch a lot of that green and roll fast. But regardless, hole number one is an easy, easy eagle. It's a must eagle in order to win and compete in the tournament, in my opinion. Okay, that's going to take us on here to hole number two. Hole number two, we're doing a no moving target, 10% at maximum distance of our club. And we're using a marlin here. Um just because it's all we really need. Uh, you can most certainly use yourself a navigator ball. The advantage of that would, of course, be getting you that wind resistance. Now, this is only 2.6 mile per hour wind, but with these Marlins and Rookie, you could get hit with, you know, about five mile per hour wind. So the wind is going to be pretty variable. So again, like I said, you could definitely use yourself a navigator to reduce the wind. But you're going to see here, we're just trying to catch the funnel and we come up a little bit short. What I would like you to do is I would, re I would just like you to keep the same shot with the no moving target. Reduce that by about uh, half a backspin. So all we want to do instead of one backspin is one half backspin. And I would probably take a practice shot or two with the um, half backspin approach and see how that does for you. Because hole number two does give us a good chance to drop in that hole in one. Hole number three. We're going to go 10% at max. We're going to use a katana. We're going to go full top, full right. You're going to notice here I put my orange ring um, eventually over by the left rough hand line at the plus 11 yard mark. 
That's just gonna be the maximum distance with the extra mile. From here, like I said, I make that 10% adjustment. Really not a whole lot to show. This is pretty straightforward. I go with a little bit of overpower, but not much, but I do go with pretty heavy curl. So as far as my curl goes, you'll see that, take a look at the ball. The left edge of the ball is just covering the inner part of that blue target zone. So you kind of see how they're, they're touching each other right there. That's why I'm going with my curl. This ends up being a nice shot. We slam this thing up the fairway, leaves us here for shot number two. Shot number two is frustrating because on both of my accounts, I hit a great ball. Wouldn't you figure? But here I'm using a backbone. You can use whatever long, long iron of your choice. And you can see here that I put 10%. Now the reason that I don't put 10% at mid, medium, or max is because we're all gonna get pretty different drives on this hole. You might go with more overpower. You might go with a normal shot. You might hit a great ball. Uh, but regardless, our yard differences are going to be pretty substantially different on this hole. But I do want to play at 10%. On myself, I played at 10% at, um, I think I played it at minimum. I don't remember. But regardless, you're going to see here that as long as you check your distance of your club, you're going to be good because I hit a great ball to the left and a perfect ball would have been in for an albatross. So, or at least very close to it. But regardless, the spin was good, the shot looked good, we just need to hit perfect, which is the biggest part of the game. Hole number four, 20% at minimum distance. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that you have your backbone in your bag because the backbone um, and this power of one ball is going to allow us to find our absolute minimum distance line of the sniper. So you see that red area right there? I can't pull my sniper back any further. That's what we want. Uh, we want the game to stop us, which is finding minimum distance of the club. Now take a look at the spin that I go here, three back, two left, and you'll notice that I have an offset. The wind and the way this green slopes is definitely pushing us to the left-hand side of the hole. I have my ball guideline not even touching the hole. It's fully offset to the right-hand side of the cup. 20% pull at minimum distance here. You see we get that perfect ball, which is good, but this kick just takes us ever so slightly to the left-hand side of the cup. Um, so there's a couple things you could do here. You could offset more. You know, I, I don't want to suggest too much more of an offset. You know, what I would really probably do is take a little bit of spin off. You might even be able to take a navigator to this hole. Now I know the navigator is only one bar of side spin, but I think that that might be all we need with a good offset like we do, like I have there. And you're gonna be able to square this one up for a hole in one. This is not a difficult hole in one. You won't see a lot of people get it. You'll see a lot of people play the rough bump, which is pretty inconsistent in my opinion on the rollout because the rough is like kind of, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like kind of like bendy, like it's got a bend in it. So you might, again, take just a navigator to the practice tees and try to do that three back spin, one bar left side spin with an offset and get that one dialed in because I think you can get it really, really close. I was close there on my first attempt, so I think it'll be really good. Hole number six here, I think. Um, regardless, this is the next par five. This is going to give us a good chance for an albatross. Here we're going to play the left-hand side. I always play the left-hand side on this hole. I think it sets us up best for the albatross opportunity. We're going to do another 10% at max pull on our drive. No overpower. We're just getting this thing up the fairway like that, and we're good to go. Shot number two. Shot number two is a little bit tricky with the headwind here. And the only reason that I say that is because I set this ball up dead middle of the of the hole right on my first attempt on my other account and you know the green took my ball and rolled it just to the left hand side of the cup so barely so this time you see i'm using another offset i've got my ball guideline past the hole 
but the left edge of my ball guide line is touching the outside edge of the, right, of the cup on the right-hand side there. You can see that. So I thought for sure if I just hit a perfect ball, this is going to be an albatross. Like, I was so confident. I was like, oh, man, all I got to do is hit perfect, and I'm good. Well, I do hit perfect. And then oddly enough, um, we roll the other way. So that one's a little tricky, a little trickier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, if I was going to change anything different and then have another chance at it, what all I would really do is I would put my ball guideline in the cup, but definitely right-hand side of the flag stick. That's what I would do if I were you. All right, this takes us on to our next hole. This, again, if you want to compete in the tournament and win the tournament, I do believe you have to make this shot uh, for an eagle. I'm playing the right-hand side. In my opinion, the right-hand side has always given us the um, the best way to pick up the eagle. So you'll see here we get this ball. Rolls really nicely for 345. Now the thing about shot number two that you have to be careful of is I'm playing at 0%, but this green is glitchy. If you start to apply backspin, you could definitely come up short of the hole even though your ball guideline may not say that so keep that in mind um, that happened to me on my other account so on this one you're going to see me go with a no spin shot i do play this one zero percent at mid we would be okay to maybe add this to five or ten percent elevation because i do make this on the left hand side of the hole but regardless it goes in you see here i'm aiming dead center i've, I've got my ball guideline going significantly through the hole by about more than one, by, by about probably, yeah, one green square. And I just do that because, again, this ball can come up short. It is a little bit weird. Perfect ball. And like I said, I sneak it into the left-hand side. That's why maybe we could add 5 to 10% elevation and play that one at mid and still be good. All right, now I have to kind of talk you through this one. This is one that we can pick up a hole-in-one on. I, I do pick up a hole-in-one, um, but I don't think a lot of opponents will. So I think if you can really practice this one and get this shot down, you're going to be way ahead of the field. Um, you know, you could possibly pick up a drop here that maybe you missed one of the easier drops. I always play this hole for the most part on rookie, no moving target. I always have, even way back in the day when I grinded Tour 6, I always played it no moving target. I play it one to one, and I just I just find the offset and the spin to get the spin right. Here, I want you to notice where I set up, and we're not going to pay attention to the spin yet because I redo it. And I, I definitely took about two or three balls to the practice tees, and got this one figured out because this is just one I wanted to get. And you see here. By me getting this one, this is gonna. This is what right now is separating me from being in first by myself to a four or five way tie for first. Okay, so we want to spin until our ball guideline looks like this. Take a look at where the hole is at. The hole is in the light green square vertical row. Next to the hole is the dark greener squares. I am got my ball guideline and spin just aiming almost where the, the dark green and the light green squares meet, okay? But you can kind of see that there. My best advice is if you have multiple devices in your home, you take a screenshot of something like this so that when you go to set your shot up in the game, you're looking at a reference point. Now, this doesn't mean that if every single person aims exactly there, you're going to get the hole in one, but it's going to leave you really, really darn close if not dropping it like I did. 3.4 wind means I'm going to pull this 3.4 rings. Perfect ball. And we really love the way this thing looks. And we come in dead center for the hole in one. All right, hole number eight here. Hole number eight, we're going to be using a kingmaker if you want. Um, you know... If you have an extra mile eight, you're definitely able to make this drive, okay? If you don't have an extra mile eight, I don't think you're going to make it. 
Um, you would have to go with an absolute full overpower shot with a Kingmaker and hope to clip that rough and roll out. Now, worst case scenario, you get stuck in the sand or rough. You can see it's still a very short chip in for Eagle. Uh, most players at the lower level clubs, you're going to have to play the right hand side. That's kind of what stinks um, in a tournament. You might get out clubbed here. Okay. Or if you follow my advice and you just hoard all of your berserkers, you could make this shot easier with a berserker, no matter what kind of club you have. Um, because you can see here that I'm, I'm pushing up into overpower, um, even with this kingmaker here. I don't pull any rings. I just, I just put my ball guideline like this. I know the wind is pushing from right to left. So I've kind of got my yellow ring over here on the rough line with my ball guideline favoring the right-hand side of that second fairway like that. So you see how much I put on the right-hand side? Now here's the thing. You can't hit a great right, okay? That's just not going to happen. You're not going to get there if you hit a great right. But here I don't have to go with that much overpower. I'm going with a little bit of overpower and just a little bit of curl to the right. Now we do hit a perfect ball, which is going to be key. As you can see here, we bounce over the sand, clip the rough, roll out of the heavy rough and the light rough, leaving you for what would be a very easy eagle opportunity. This is, again, especially if you're in tier number three, this is a hole you have got to eagle in order to give yourself a chance to win the tournament. So we have to eagle one. Um, we need to eagle, I think it was hole five, and then we need to eagle this one as well. So a minus 15 at minimum is is probably going to put you in a top 10 competition. I think that we're going to have to shoot a minus 16 or a minus 17 to win this in tier three. That's going to take us on the hole nine. Hole nine, the, the best advice I can give you for shot number one here is do not let your ball guideline fool you. This second fairway that we're landing on rolls fast. It always has. You can see here that even though I am aiming halfway in the middle of the fairway with no top spin. Look where this ball goes. Okay, so you don't want to add any top spin to that shot. And there's two things you can do here. If you really want to go for it, you could, you could try to play the rough bump. Um, this would be a good wind angle to play the rough bump. But for me, I knew that if I had an eagle on this hole, I would be in sole possession of first. I didn't want to do something stupid like hit a great ball and, and pound sand or get stuck in the rough. So I just took a guardian here just for the extra distance and the backspin. And you're going to see here I'm just laying up on the green. Um, sometimes you just have to know when not to risk it. For me, this is a situation where I wanted that minus 16 for the tiebreaker on Saturday. And yeah, minus 17 would be better. But the probability of me picking up the, the albatross on my very first attempt with no practice shots and not testing it on my other account, I just decided, you know what, we're just going to take this eagle and then call it a day. Hey, everybody, please subscribe. Please, please hit the thumbs up button and let me know how you do in the comments. Let me know what you think it's going to take to win this tournament. Have a great day, everybody.